Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, my talk today is going to on the full army worm, especially doing some research update. Um, the previous presentation, we gave some basic stuff. So maybe I put some extra stuff into this uh, today. Um, as Kaidi said, I'm working on a couple of full army worm projects funded by Hot Innovation and Depart in our department, Department of Queensland. Uh, <clears throat> um, just give a brief um, what we did from the incursion of full army worm. We did some full army worm monitoring work um, in the Bowen Burdekin area. Um, we still still be continuing that one in a smaller scale now, so mainly using the sex pheromone to attract the male moths. Um, um, the initially we get uh, two type of uh, moth in the traps for fall army worm and also false army worm. Um, this is a bit of um, seasonal data for the last year. Just to give you my idea, this is the time the incursion started in um, the Bowen area, so Bowen Burdekin area. Uh, then you know at the start you see the blue lines is so pretty low numbers of uh, fall army worm catches and the false army worm in the red line was a bit higher. So we this is around 200 to over 200 moths at the start. Then um, within a couple of months the numbers was a bit slow, but um, after that the numbers started increasing even through the winter time. The temperature a bit cooler here, uh, but still the moth uh, fall army worm activity was higher. Uh, when they getting into August, September, the numbers pretty much increased to like around 800, 900 more in a couple of traps so each farm. Um, then uh, we see that uh, false army worm numbers not that high. The false army worm was taking over. It was pretty much matched with um, the damage we seen in the crop, especially on sweet corn. Uh, just give a bit of um, post uh, crop got affected. Um, especially in the Queensland uh, region, what we find. Um, majority of the uh, sweet corn crops got pretty bad damage, like around the losses, around 30 to 90 percent losses we seen last year. And also still this year is a bit better, but still some damage is happening. Um, we seen the numbers um, after September started increasing in the trap now. Um, maize and corn, popcorn also got affected, um, but some level of damage to sorghum and also in capsicum early in the year like april may we seen some infestation with fall army worm also is get mixed with a bit of uh, cluster caterpillars other army worm and we can go up of this and occasionally we heard some damage to cucumber crops like uh, cucumbers and melon and ginger and soya beans they are look like a bit of spill off thing is not really consistent it's often occasional then other crop like a tomato, eggplant, green beans are pretty much grown in larger scale around here. Uh, we didn't notice any significant damage on this crop. We seen a bit of a clay on tomato, but not uh, didn't see any um, caterpillars feeding on the leaves or foliage. Uh, this one showing what the intents of the damage happening to the um, sweet corn. Uh, pretty much from the early stage, like at two to three leaf stage, we started to see really high damage. Unsprayed crop, you see pretty much 60-70% um, of the seedlings started dying off. And they're pretty much getting into the roots, um, the, the, the base of the stem and getting toward the roots and pretty much killing the plant. And once they come to the vegetative stage, the damage still still higher. The plant can be able to tolerate some damage, but it can co impact. Um, then also we see quite a lot of damage to tassels and they're moving into the cops and unlike heliothes we see quite a lot of damage go toward the middle of the cops. Um, this is a bit of infestation happening on capsicum crop we found um, early in the year and a bit of last year. Um, they mostly see that uh, they lay eggs pretty much on the underside of the um, foliage um, under so the leaves, especially on the younger leaves. Um, then we see some young caterpillars inside the fruit. The fruit showing a bit of yellowing at the start, but very hard to see any entry hole or anything at early. This look like a very tiny little hole that toward the calyx area around here. Uh, then they're moving into the um, uh, fruit and feeding inside. We normally notice rotting or yellowing of the fruit when they come to nearly third or fourth in star stage larvae. 
um, sometimes they pupating inside the foot and also seen they coming out from the exit hole like a big hole and pupate into the soil. Um, this is giving us a bit of idea about the um, whole army worm activity in the Gamlu district where the majority of the capsicum has been grown. Um, here in 2020, we've seen only a few numbers during the winter time, like a May, June, July. But this year, it coincides with the damage we've seen really high number of whole army worm moths per week. It's gone up to over 200 moths in May, then June, July is like with decline, uh, but the damages were seen around this time. <clears throat> um, this is um, just a bit of touching on the management option of the um, whole army worms, um, what the insecticide has been permitted to use, um, pretty much around five insecticide, the new mode of actions, a corrigin, success, neo, and procline avatar and prodigy, you know, this one, this one. Um, pro Corrigin and spenitrodram and evermectin is been widely used. And the older chemistries like methomil is belong to the carbamate group and pyrethroid like um, uh, dominates so fastac and organophosphate type product. Uh, we didn't see any really any good control with this product. Initially, we tested some work with methomil um, to see any ovicidal or larvicidal effect pretty minimal, so we didn't see any really good. But that actually matched with some of the resistant um, uh, test contacted by New South Wales DPI, and they also finding some mutation for, for with, um, carbamate and chlorophyll or organophosphate group. And we did some did some seed treatment and soil application type uh, work uh, to see can protect the early seed, early part of the crop like um, um, two or three leaf stage and mostly the seed treatment soil application uh, we started to see giving up to two to three weeks of protection for early stage and also we're doing some volatile control work and see what are the endemic parasitoids um, and predators available or attacking for armyworm um, there's also this another pathogen or um, product called phologen is the biopesticide similar to NPV type nuclear polyhetrovirus. Um, there is a bit of um, insecticide um, trial work we did um, with, um, with sweet corn, um, with um, the foliar application of corrigin at the label rate and high rate, and also a couple of other new mode of action and chaos, uh, mod, new chemistries we tested, and also the pyrethroid combined with um, pipenol betoxide called Synergy and the control. The control within three, four weeks, we see the damage score gone up to close to close to nine, actually. The damage scores uh, we assess with the zero to nine scale, and like I call Davis scale, so pretty much a standard scale uh, adapted overseas in other countries. So we're following the same uh, protocol. Um, around under three is um, reasonably, you know, not really big damage, so like a low to moderate level of foliage damage, but if we're going over six to nine, it's pretty large damage. So these two product um, control and the pyrethroid didn't do any uh, control, any prevention of the damage by fall armyworm, but other four product um, reasonably provided control. Um, this one actually, I'll just share some of the um, recent trial work we did um, uh, doing a rotational program. Um, this is a sweet corn um, was sown on some day, first week of April, then it had a neonicotinoid seed treatment on it. I'm not sure how that worked or not, but with the pressure was a bit less at the start. Then from nearly two weeks after um, uh, sowing or maybe a 10 days after emergence, um, we started applying the foliagin um, at the label rate first with the optimal as um, adjuvants into it. And also we um, con one this set of option we got 200 ml of phologen at three time at a weekly interval and phologen start at 200 then gone up to 300 ml just keep it over the one and see what's any make any different then we come back with close to um, tussling stage or later part of the vegetation we apply three set of corrigin at weekly interval at the label rate and also success new at the highest label rate um, Deploy. Then we close to 
um, some COP started to develop, then we applied it to uh, pro clients. Voila, then we did assessment. This slide is showing the um, damage score. Um, so pretty much at the start, we didn't see any big difference between the treatment. But when you go on the third, after third application, we saw some reduction with um, 300 ml of the um, Fologen. But when you success Neo and Corrigin pretty much uh, work at the early stage, then pretty much at the end, we seen the damage was um, gone, gone down when you started using the, these other two chemistries. Um, this one actually is showing in the two options, what level of um, harvest at the end harvest damage. Um, this one showing no damage is free from 100% free from damage and this has some steep damage still acceptable for pre-packed um, um, market and this is rejected mean this pretty much not acceptable for market. So this is other option I just earlier said and um, option one and option two. Option two had a bit more um, un undamaged cops and the tip damage cops also a bit more on the uh, option one. So pretty much the rejected cops is pretty much the same on both um, options. Here actually, um, we wanted to see how the foliagen is working. I want to see how long it's take to die. So what we did actually, we spray the foliagen into the sweet corn, then collected the leaves at 24 hours after after um, treatment and brought to the lab and feeding with um, uh, from larvae from the colony and see when they're eating, how long it takes to die. It's like looking at the residual toxicity of that collagen. So the neonate larvae took um, nearly three to five days time is gave nearly 100% mortality. To get the 100% mortality, it take up to five days for neonate larvae. But when they move into the bigger stage larvae, like a st second instar stage, um, the th third day we seen only around less than 40% killed and fifth day 60 and uh, nearly get the seventh day only took um, at seven days nearly all of them died. So it's working but it's look like it's a slow working process unlike the um, conventional chemistry. Please. Here we're looking at that uh, two more minutes to go, Subra. Sorry? Sorry, Subra, two more minutes to go. Okay, yeah, thanks. Then. Um, yeah, the biological control option, we got um, this is a predators we commonly finding here called um, spine shield bug, the adult stage and the nymphs and egg stages. They seem to be one of the um, seem to be good predators in the field, especially in the warmer time. Um, so also we saw finding some other predators um, uh, like assassin bug and earwigs and another white banded uh, shield bug and some ants also giving some control, uh, especially in the softer spray program products. Um, this is other parasitoids uh, we got like um, technid flies. They normally come and lay the eggs on the back of the whole army worm here, and they develop inside the um, larvae and the pupae come out from the whole army worm larvae. And also we finding another um, egg larval parasitoid um, is called chilonus. Um, is um, attacking the um, eggs of egg masses of the polami worm and killing the larval stages. And another larval parasitoid not been identified yet. Um, this is another important one called the coast easier. We started to finding this one only this year from the Bowen area. Um, also, this has been reported in the Burdekin and other areas. We finding really around 30, 40 pupil masses come out from the polami, infected polami worm larvae and it catching out from the one and one. We collected this one from a phologen and corrigin plot and also from phologen and success neo spread plot. Seem to be that spread in cause much more mortality or emergence from the pupae. Most of the pupae emerge from the spread plot. Um, in a summary, um, we see the Polami worm activity low during the early part June, July, then started increasing after June, July, it's pretty high numbers. And also we finding the eggs pretty much all the time is hence an egg lay happening. And sweet corn should be well protected from the early stage from V2 to V4, that is a critical time. 
and the, we find some poor control with the older chemistries like epidetroid and methomil and also success neo and collagen providing a better control. Uh, Polygen work mainly on neonate larvae and is taking up to three to seven days to cause 100% or full mortality. And soil treatments mainly giving up to two weeks of protection. And there are some six parasitoid um, and predators we finding in bit of abundance in the um, polar amoeba infested areas. Okay, that's pretty much. So just acknowledge the funding bodies and our department of primary industries and hot innovation, um, and also the um, sweet corn growers. Um, we partnership with them to helping this work, and also the collaborators from New South Wales, DPOI, and Western Australia. Thank you very much. <clears throat>